morning, everyone. Welcome to Kids Church Online. I'm Alex, and I'm here to get us started. Remember, next week is Live the Mission weekend. So if you have your Live the Mission boxes with your donations in them, be sure to bring those next week. They don't have to look like this. They don't have to be very full. But if you have money in them, then remember to bring them next week. And as Lisa said, if we get, I think it was 50 people who bring Live the Mission boxes next week, then Lisa and I are both going to get pied in the face. So I'm not sure how much to encourage everything because I don't really want a pie in the face, but it's worth it for missions because we want to support people around the world telling people about Jesus and using the Word of God to, to help people and to give people good news. So let's head to Miss Lisa for our Bible story today about the Bible. Hey guys, welcome back. We have an awesome story today, and I love this story because it's kind of one of those ones that we're going to use to demonstrate our very last piece of the armor of God, which is the sword of the spirit. And this one's kind of cool because most of the armor is all about defense, right? We're protecting ourselves, and God uses the helmet and the breastplate and the shield and the shoes to protect our bodies, right? If we go into battle. But the sword of the spirit is one of those that we can use to go on offense. We can battle against Satan and we can battle against the things of this world with what God has given us. And what God has given us is the Bible. He's given us scripture that is true. And he, it says, scripture is like a two-edged sword. The scripture that we read and when we use it and apply it and know it and speak it out, it's like we're going on offense. We are, God is giving us a sword that we can cut through the lies that Satan puts in our way. We can know what the truth is so that we can battle against the things of this world. And so Peter and John were both disciples of Jesus and after Jesus died and rose again and then went up to heaven, basically he commissioned Peter and all the disciples to go and make disciples of all the nations, to go tell people. And so Peter and John were walking through the temple and right at the temple gates, typically what would happen is people would bring beggars that didn't, that were lame. So when they're lame, we say that they're kind of like paralyzed, so they can't walk, or they're blind, or they have um, they have issues where they can't move. And so people would come and drop them at the temple gates, and that's where they could go to beg for food or money or different things. And so there was a beggar sitting at the gates, and Peter and John walked by, and this beggar was asking for money. And Peter and John turned around and looked and said, you know what, we don't have any money to give you. So Peter and John could have just walked past this man. Have you ever done that when you walk past someone who's asking for money and just say, sorry man, I don't have anything. Well, Peter and John said, I don't have any money. We don't have anything to give you except we can give you what Jesus wants to give you. And he, they turned around and they looked at this man who couldn't walk and they said, I want you to stand up pick up your mat because you have been healed. And this lame man who everyone knew had been not able to walk since he was born, jumped up, rolled up his mat, and he started running around the temple praising God because God had healed him. Don't you think that's so awesome that getting up and walking is way better than getting a couple of coins, right? To maybe last a day. But what Peter and John gave to this man was something that was far greater. And God wants to give you something that's far greater than even you can imagine. And when we use the sword of the spirit, we read it, we know it. Peter and John knew that when they spoke healing in Jesus' name, that God was going to answer because they knew what the word said. And the word says that you and I, if we are followers and believers in Jesus, that we have the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. 
And as we read, we get to know all of these things that are available to us to do in the name of Jesus that can do amazing things, that can battle against all of those things that we can't see. Some of you guys might be sitting at home, and especially right now, it's really hard. Maybe you guys are doing distance learning. Maybe you're on the computer all day long, and it is just hard. You're tired and you're worn down. Maybe you're young and you haven't gotten to go out and play with your friends the way that you normally do, and that makes you sad. But guess what, guys? God gave us His Word. God gave us the sword of the Spirit that we could pray and we could speak out and read his Bible and know that he is with us all the time. That he is going to give us the tools to fight back against sadness, against being scared, against fear, against being super tired of getting on your computer for the fifth time every single day. So in those moments, go to God's word. Use the sword of the spear, right? A sword doesn't work unless you pick it up and use it. And so the Bible's not going to work for you. It's not going to it's not some magic book that sits on your shelf and as long as it's in your room and you look at it once a day, it's going to do some amazing thing. No, just like a sword, you need to pick up the Bible, you need to open it and you need to read it. If you can't read, ask your parents to read it for you. Okay? Cuz there are some amazing things and God can use the scriptures and the word, the living word of God to do battle on your behalf. So have a great day. Use that sword of spirit. Pick it up. Know what's in it. Read it. And you're going to see some amazing things that God wants to teach you. All right. Thanks, Lisa, for a great story. So how does this hit our real lives? Uh, we can't always carry a Bible around with us. I mean, that's a great idea. But when we're logging on to Zoom class or when we want to feel a certain way when our parents say something or when our friends say something or when we're in a situation that we want to do something wrong. We can't always go to our backpack and pull out a Bible and look up a verse to see what it says. Instead, you can memorize it and remember a few verses. And the more verses you memorize, the more of the sword of the spirit you'll have ready to use at a moment's notice. So for instance, if you're at uh, a store somewhere and you see a candy bar that you really want to grab but you don't have any money, you, th you might think, ah, I could just grab that and walk out and no one would notice. But then you pull out the sword of the spirit because you remember Exodus 20, 15 that says, you must not steal. And you, bam, destroy that thought to steal. Or when your parents say, hey, go clean your room. And your first thought is, but I don't want to clean my room. But then you pull out that thought. And then you remember the Bible says, honor your father and mother. Bam! And you destroy the thought that says, uh, that says to dishonor your father and mother. Or if you are with some friends and you see someone who's hurting and who, who needs a hug or who needs some food or who needs something that, that you have, you can remember what the Bible says in what Jesus said in Luke 6 31 and he said do to others what you would like them to do to you and he can use the sword and cut down all the despair cut down all the fear cut down all the doubts anything that might stand in your way of doing the right thing and obeying God the sword of the spirit is a powerful weapon and it can cut down all sorts of bad things especially bad thoughts in your head so learn God's word, learn some verses, pick some verses to memorize. So that way you can carry them with you even if you don't have a Bible in your back pocket. This is a great thing to do and you should keep doing this your whole life. I'm working on memorizing uh, a bit of the Bible right now and it's such a rewarding experience and it's gonna stay with me for the rest of my life because I know that I'm carrying the sword with me and it's gonna protect me and it's gonna do God's will in any part of life. So that's my challenge for you guys. If you want to also make a craft to, uh, to help remember this, you can grab some paper, just cut out a sword, call it the sword of the spirit, and maybe even on the back side, you can write down the verse that you want to memorize, whether you can write down the whole thing or just the first reference to quiz yourself. 
and then put that somewhere or carry it around in a way that's going to remind you, hey, I'm going to cut down all those thoughts to say things other than what God wants. So there you go, guys. Let's head to some worship. We'll see you next week. Put on the full armor of God, stand strong against the evil one. Put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God. First things first, got the belt of truth. Put on my boots, gotta tell the good news. The armor of God and the shield of faith. Got my sword and my helmet, now it's time to pray I put on the full armor of God Stand strong against the evil one I put on the full armor of God The full armor of God First things first, you got the belt of truth Put on my boots, I gotta tell the good news the armor of God and the shield of faith Got my sword and my helmet, now it's time to pray Put on the full armor of God, stand strong against the evil one Put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God Put on the full armor of God, stand strong against the evil one Put on Now in faith we can stand, stand, stand Against every evil plan, plan, plan Now it's time to be strong, strong, strong He has won I put on the full armor of God Stand strong against the evil one I put on the full armor of God The full armor of God I put on the full armor of God Stand strong against the evil one I put